Hi, I'm Corey, and I am on the marketing team at Notion. I'm a designer and developer. And just this last year, we migrated our entire marketing website from a client rendered approach to 100% Next.js, fully static. And today I wanna to talk about that journey. This talk is especially for you if you're working on a project or a team and you're thinking about going static using Next.js as a static site generator, but you're not totally sure. Hopefully this talk will give you some ideas about how to migrate and what that process looks like. In this talk, I'm gonna cover four parts. I'm gonna start from where we started with our client rendered marketing site. Next, I'm gonna talk about our journey to choosing Next.js, then a little bit about building the static site and the technical decisions we made. And finally, I'm gonna share our really incredible results. Let's talk about where we started. When I joined Notion, it was still quite a small team. We worked out of this little garage in the mission, under 20 people, and a lot of technical decisions were made to move quickly. So we had one giant components folder and we shared components between the marketing site and the app. And this mono repo approach was super cool and sharing everything allowed us to do things like pulling in live demos to our marketing site because the marketing site was the product. There wasn't really a distinction. But over time, this started to create issues for us on the developer experience side. If we're pulling in a button that said sign up, for example, it would, it would pull on all this complexity from the app. It would have all these different props um, that were related to like mobile and touch when all we really needed for uh, the marketing site was a simple button that allowed us to sign up. So here we were faced with quite a few developer experience problems, um, but at the same time, we were having a lot of user experience problems. And some of these pain points were, first of all, our JavaScript bundle size, on the marketing site homepage was 9.1 megabytes. And this is because we were pulling in the entire app code onto our landing page. We didn't have any code splitting set up because it was a small team and you know that kind of webpack configuration can take forever. Another problem was SEO. Our marketing site was 100% client rendered. So some pages were showing up in Google, some weren't. A little later, we started integrating a headless content management system called Contentful and on the blog, for example, we had three contentful API calls. So this meant there was going to be loading spinners everywhere on our blog. And finally, our performance. Um, we were scoring about 50 out of 100 on Google Lighthouse. The score just wasn't up to where we'd like it to be. So eventually, it hit a point where, as a developer, I was getting frustrated. I could tell our users were getting frustrated. And it was clear that we needed some sort of solution to increase our performance of our marketing experience. We started with an RFC doc in Notion, and we outlined what we saw were two paths forward. One path was to optimize what we have, and another path was to use a static site generator. You know, I'm, I'm not a fan of totally throwing out everything and starting over. Um, in many cases, it is smart to optimize what you have. We could have you know, implemented code splitting on our own. We could have reduced that JavaScript bundle size. We could have um, simplified the shared components. There was a lot we could do um, without making a drastic change. We also compared it to using something like Next.js. And what we found is that migrating to Next.js would be a similar amount of work, but we would also get all these extra benefits um, for free. It made more sense, right? If we're gonna do a lot of work to migrate, we might as well get as much benefit on the DX side and UX side as possible. Once we identified that we wanted to go with the static site generator, we didn't just choose Next.js. We actually had a wish list of things that we were looking for um, that Next.js just happened to fit. On our wish list, we wanted something that was React-based because our whole code base is React-based. We wanted TypeScript support. That's been super helpful in catching bugs early. We wanted easy content management system integration with Contentful. We wanted full CSS support, and we wanted to use something like Style JSX that would allow us to use the full power of CSS. We wanted a great publishing workflow. We have a bunch of contributors to our marketing site, and we wanted them to be able to preview content um, and ship it quickly. And finally, we wanted to choose a solution that was future-proof. We want a marketing site that can grow with us. Ideally, we don't want to replace it again in a few years. We want to um, choose a platform that we feel is in it for the long run and is going to continuously improve as we do. Next.js was that. 
All right, so we've chosen our static site generator. Next, I want to talk about what building the static site with Next.js was actually like. How much work was this? What was actually involved? First, I want to get into the actual migration scope. This was a big project, um, I'm not going to lie. It was about 200,000 lines of code. We had to migrate 109 React components, 23 static pages, 129 dynamically generated pages, two locales, and at the end, it took about two months and about two engineers um, working on this to do. Not a small undertaking, you know, it's all React, so most of the components and code we could reuse. One of the things we had to figure out was version control. And we were initially considering creating a separate repository for the marketing site, but eventually we decided to stick with our mono repo. So this is what it looks like now. Basically everything is in one, one repo, right? So marketing has a folder, our mobile apps have a folder, desktop apps have a folder. We can continue to share critical uh, code like analytics, helper scripts. We've moved away from sharing our components folder just because we found that marketing components were very different from app components. So components are no longer shared, but we do use this mono repo approach to share other configuration information. The next big challenge was routing and this was the thing that we were probably the most nervous about going with this mono repo approach because our marketing site and our app live on the same domain uh, notion.so and a lot of companies will put their app on a subdomain right like app.notion.so but we we don't do that so we had to find a way to run this next.js app and our client app on the same domain and have our router be aware. The solution we ended up choosing was implementing a reverse proxy. And the way it works is actually quite straightforward. So a request comes in to the Notion marketing website. It first hits our API server and our API server parses the URL. It looks at the route and we have an allow list of marketing URLs, which are essentially the Next.js URLs. If it is one of these URLs, the API server through the reverse proxy forwards the request to our marketing server, which is running Next.js. And if it is not a marketing URL, the API server handles the request on its own and, for example, serves um, the response needed for a Notion database. So with this talk of reverse proxies and multiple servers, you're probably wondering how we deployed our marketing site. And the answer is that it lives in its own Docker container and it is deployed to AWS ECS. And we, we stuck with AWS because it, it powers everything else at Notion. Um, someday in the future, we may uh, migrate to Vercel because there's a lot of features that are included there that we'd like to take advantage of. Another big change we made uh, during this migration was moving away from React style props towards style JSX. For our app, React style props make a ton of sense because it's super easy to compute uh, style values with interpolated JavaScript. But for the marketing site, uh, style JS we found is a lot more expressive. It allows you to do things like um, pseudo classes like hover or active. Um, and media queries are a lot simpler too. On top of that, style.jsx is included with Next.js. You don't actually have to install anything. You know, you end up with this super nice solution where your styles are co-located with your components. And it's been incredibly great for us. We also love how styles are scoped to components and they don't leak. After a few months of heads down migration work, it was finally time to make the switch. And there are a lot of big PRs. We needed to come up with a solution to launch this new static marketing site um, without any downtime and also with the option to revert to the old site if necessary. The solution we decided upon was we have an experiments framework we use to turn features on and off in the app. And we did the same thing through the for the marketing site. We had our new Next.js marketing site running alongside our old client rendered site. Um, so they both existed in our code base for a period of time. We'd say half of the traffic send it to the old site, half of it send it to the new site. So we had this period of about two weeks where we slowly ramped up traffic to our new marketing site. As we investigated the performance and the server load, we saw that everything was okay. And then eventually we got to 100%. And at that point, we were able to pull out all of our previous um, client rendered marketing site code. So all this hard work is behind us, and now it's time to look at the results. 
I was very excited to share internally that we had a new marketing site and it was a funny message to share because the first thing you'll notice on our new marketing site is absolutely nothing. And this is something I'd really recommend if you're transitioning to Next.js from an existing marketing site. We intentionally de-scoped the project as much as possible. We could have turned it into a redesign or a rethink, but that would add more time and complexity. We wanted to keep this project to a purely performance uh, migration. Our final performance scores were just incredible, of course, with all the Next.js sites. We're in the green here with a 97 out of 100. The, the great thing about using Next.js is once a year when this, the, the big release comes out, I feel like our performance gets upgraded without us even lifting a finger. From my perspective, the, the true magic of Next.js is this marriage of user experience and developer experience. Um, and I think that's super unique. There's a lot of tools out there that me as an engineer, I'll look at them and I'll say, I really want this tool. It's gonna make my developer workflow better. It's gonna make my life better. But there isn't always a strong uh, argument for how it's gonna make the user's life better. So Next.js is in the sweet spot where I'm really happy, um, Notion's users are really happy, and it's just a win-win for everyone. So I want to talk about the main user experience improvements we've seen. First of all, we have super high performance. Our Google Lighthouse score is now 97 out of 100. Every page on our site is pre-rendered and cached by Cloudflare. Um, there's not a single loading spinner on our entire marketing site. Much smaller page weight. Our initial required JavaScript on our homepage is down 93% from 9.1 megabytes to 847 kilobytes. And finally, SEO is way better than it used to be. Help Center articles and blog posts are finally showing up at the top of Google. Users can actually find things now. And finally, I want to talk about developer experience. I am just overjoyed. My job has gotten a lot easier. I'm probably twice as fast and productive day to day in this new code base. It's, it's really incredible. Some of the things I really like, first of all, performance is a default in Next.js. We get automatic code splitting, no webpack config. Um, you don't really have to think about it and performance often just happens. Content queries come without a cost. So on our blog, there's three different calls to our headless CMS to grab different pieces of content. And before, that would result in loading spinners on the client. No longer, it's all pulled in at build and served statically. Full CSS support, and this is thanks to StyleJSX, which isn't technically part of Next.js, but um, has been a game changer, and I highly recommend it. I finally feel like I can be creative and make a beautiful page. And finally, something we've started using recently is incremental static regeneration, which if you haven't used it, I highly recommend trying it. The idea is you render your entire um, site initially, and then at request, if content changes on a page, that page can rebuild in real time without rebuilding the entire site. So you get all the benefits of a static site um, without the downfalls of having to rebuild and having out-of-date content. So we've implemented this across every page on our site that has semi real-time content, and it's been amazing. Okay, so that was a little bit about Notion's journey, and now it is your turn. And I wanna say, if, if you're on a team and you're trying to make this decision about, should we move to a static site generator? Should we choose Next.js? It is a hard decision, and it, it's a big decision. Our experience has been nothing but positive, and every year when there's new Next.js features released, our performance increases, our developer happiness increases, our user happiness increases, and it's just a win-win for everyone. I really think it's worth um, taking the leap and at least uh, trying it out. Good luck. <laughs> so thanks so much for spending some time with me. Um, I'm on Twitter at Coryatscorn, and the content from this talk is also available on the Notion blog um, if you'd like to dive in a little deeper. Thanks. Thanks.